Wow. Aspire Skills Hub um, is a platform that seeks to help students, students in Africa, students all over the world, um, get easy access to scholarships. It's also a platform for career development and skills training. So that is what we do. We do work with so many schools. Currently, we are working with five schools and we have four schools in the United States of America. We do have Andrews University. We do have Eastern Michigan University. We also do have um, Missouri Science and Tech and Dakota State University. And we do work with Yangtze University in China. So today we we'll just will be talking about um, the Aspire Aviation program that we have with Andrews University. Apart from the scholarships that we do or that we work with these partner schools with, we also do have um, seminars or sessions that we normally have each month um, and it's, mostly jet was skills training and career development. So we do have people who come in from Uber. Um, we do have people who come in from Microsoft. We have people from the military in the United States of America joining us and giving people the opportunity to apply for jobs and to apply for certain opportunities. So I think that is it for the Skills Hub and I'll talk more as we go on in the session. And as Kwame rightly said, um, he is the CEO for Aspire Business Network and eventually we will be joined by um, someone from Andrews University, um, Dr. Stephen Payne, and he will give us more details also about the aviation program. So Kwame, over to you. Okay. All right. So Amanda, you'll be controlling my slides and um, I think we need to go to the first one. So uh, thank you guys very much for coming. We were expecting a lot more people, but it's our fault. We had some technical issues with Eventbrite and Amanda is still working on resolving that issue. So hopefully we see a lot more people as we go. Um, my name is Kwame Etufempon. I'm from Kumasi. I grew up around Ghana. I grew up at different places. I lived in Sunyani before. I've lived in my hometown, Chedmasi before. I lived in Kumasi, lived in Accra, and now I live in Michigan. So I attended um, university primary, then I went to Pemper College, then I attended university here in America. And after school, I've pretty much lived most of my, um, my working life here in America. Uh, I work as a consultant for a company called Aspire Business Network. I know this platform is for Aspire Skills Hub. The Skills Hub is a subsidiary of Aspire Business Network. So um, basically, Aspire Business Network has some subsidiaries, and the subsidiary that handles education and career-related issues is what we call the Skills Hub. So that is where we are doing this um, program today. I know that a lot of you here are for the specific aviation scholarship that you know we've discussed elsewhere, and, you know, and that is why you came. So I won't bore you with other agreements and stuff like that. Of course, we have other scholarships, as Amanda mentioned. I think we have uh, over a hundred programs where we can get you into with a scholarship. Most of our scholarships are um, what we call. Uh, uh, partial scholarships, which means we take a fraction of the cost and then the student is responsible for uh, the remainder of the cost. But we will also give you information on how to, in some instances, get help for what is left. Okay. Mm, so I yeah. think Amanda, oh. we can go to the next slide. All right. So our scholarship mostly is done in partnership with different universities. And since we are talking about the aviation scholarship specifically, uh, we'll talk about Andrews University because this particular agreement is done with Andrews University. Andrews University was founded in 1850 something and it's in the state of Michigan. And actually that's why I went to school. Uh, I graduated from Andrews many years ago. And um, they have one of the best aviation programs in the country. 
they have um, the the value of the scholarship. What we take away from you from you is half the tuition per credit the per credit tuition cost. And um, in America, when you go to school, and I, I think it's actually the same for everywhere else you go to school, it's per credit. So every class has a number of credit, you know, that you're fulfilling. So let's say if you're doing chemistry, it's, it's four credits. So with here, the costing is done per credit, all right? So basically, if let's say um, the per credit cost is 1,000, we take 500, and then the student is responsible for the remaining 50%. All right, so Amanda, I think you can go to the next slide. All right, so how did this scholarship come into being? So um, we approached Andrews many years ago and said that we wanted to be able to recruit more students from uh, developing countries. And in most cases, those students are the ones who don't necessarily have the money to pay the full cost. So what can you do for us? So through negotiations and other, whatever, we came to an agreement that they will give uh, the students that we brought to them special considerations by reducing their tuition cost. So we had an agreement, I think it started in 2015, but I always felt that there was a way that we could enhance the agreement. So in 2017, we contacted Ghana's embassy in Washington, DC. So the Ghana's ambassador to the United States, we, you know, we contacted uh, him. We went through a series of meetings and then he decided that he was going to help us negotiate better terms and agreements for the Ghanaian students. So he came, we went to the embassy with some university officials. The ambassador came here to look at the school and then an agreement was reached that um, if, if uh, we could mute our mics when we are not talking because, uh, so Amanda, if mm -hmm. All right, so um, the, the ambassador came here and signed the agreement in 2017. I, I, yeah, we'll get to the date. So Amanda, next slide. Now, when we talk about aviation, there are two aspects of aviation. Okay, this is when the ambassador came to sign the agreement. And so for those who don't know the ambassador, he's the person sitting down next to the, the lady. And uh, he was Ghana's ambassador to the United States uh, for the first term of the Ecuador administration. So I think now we have a new ambassador, but this is the old one, the one who just left. And um, the person that he's sitting next to is the president for Andrews University. Uh, the person standing behind the president is called Mr. Kofitonto. He was the spokesperson for the embassy. And then I am the person to the extreme right of the screen. So the one in the blue suit, that's, that's myself. So this is the day we actually signed the agreement that we are talking about today. Now, I was talking about the difference in aviation. So Andrews University Aviation Program has two options. You have what we call aviation flight, and then we have what we call aviation maintenance. Aviation flight obviously means the person who actually flies the airplane. And then aviation maintenance is the person who fixes the plane. So the guys who put together the plane and stuff like that, those are the maintenance people. And then those who fly the plane are the ones who are responsible for flight. Okay, so Amanda, I think we can go to the next slide. So the length of program, well, it depends on the option you choose. If you decide to do the flight option, um, they have a two year option and then they have a four year option. So the four years obviously will earn you your bachelor's degree, which is your first degree. If you decide to do the maintenance, with that too, they have the two options. They have one where you can do your, your associate's degree. I think in Ghana it's called diploma, but here it's called an associate's degree. So you, you will still be able to do the things a person who fixes an airplane will do. It's just that you won't be paid as much as a person who has done the four year degree, but it's still relatively um, a good deal. When you are going to do the flight option, you can start your education elsewhere. 
actually, I think somewhere in the slide, I'll show you a school that we have a partnership with in Ghana where you can begin your education. But the FAA, which is the Federal Aviation Authority, which is the, um, the organization that lays out the rules and principles for becoming a pilot in America, they require that you do all your flight classes here in America. All right, so you can begin the education elsewhere. And I will explain that in the subsequent fly, um, slides. But the portion where you're actually in an aircraft, because with them, they work with hours. So you, you are required to have a certain number of hours of flying to be able to fly, to be able to get a license to fly in this country. They require that all that flying is done right here in America. So yes, you can start elsewhere, but the flying requirement is that you do all the flying lessons here. And depending on how many credits you have when you come in, you can complete the flying um, um, portion of it in, in that two years. Most people prefer to do it in four years because it gives them enough time and enough flexibility, but definitely you can do it in less years than um, the four years now. Aviation is a great, um, is, is, uh, is a great field. It's a great field because when you complete your program, um, the job prospects are there. You, you make a good living. Yeah, you can uh, get a good job that pays you well. Even in Africa, I was looking at reading some statistics before I started this presentation today. And it was saying that Africa needs a lot of pilots. Like we have a pilot deficit in the, in, in the region or on the continent. So wherever you decide to eventually work, you're going to be able to do some pretty good job. Now, because I don't work for the aviation department, I don't want to go into too much details about the technicalities. Um, we actually had someone who is in the aviation program who was scheduled to be with us. He may not necessarily be able to be here the whole time, but he's a student, he's a Ghanaian student who is taking aviation. He may join us at a later time if, if, if it's possible. And I, you know, I'll let him talk more about that and talk more about this school. So Amanda, I think you can go to the next slide. So this is another picture of when the ambassador came. And this is actually when we went to the aviation department and this is him inspecting one of Andrews University's aircraft, what you used to. Uh, do the training. I think you go to the next slide, next slide um, Amanda. And this is the, um, no, no, if you can go back, yes. So this is also uh, one of the places where um, they do the mechanics, the maintenance, you know, putting together the equipment and stuff like that. So that is myself in the back and the ambassador up front and the Caucasian person you see is a person that actually works there. So he's, he was one of the instructors. I don't know if he still works there, but this was, I think in 2017. I'm on the next slide. So yeah, so the maintenance options, you have the four year option. I think we already discussed the job prospects. The value of the scholarship is that Aspire uh, guarantees $7,000 per semester. And so it's $14,000 per year. When the person who, represents the university joins us shortly, he will give you the other aspects, you know, what the other cost looks like. And, and you know, so that you have a, a, a good idea how much you are expected to spend, you know, during the program. So Amanda, I think we'll go to the next slide. No, go to the next picture. This is one of the, now that picture is the ambassador, you don't see his face but he's, he's in the simulator. The simulator is a thing that you learn how to fly in before you go up there because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to get, get on an aircraft and get in the sky and not know how to behave. So this is almost like being on a plane. So it shows you some of the things, they give you the challenges. How do you fly when it's snowing? How do you fly when it's dark? You get a pretty good idea of what you are doing before you actually uh, handle an aircraft. So I think you can go to the next slide, Amanda. So we signed an agreement with KNUST in 2019. And the agreement allows for some students who have completed KNUST to transfer here. And then 
they will not have to do the whole four years because obviously you would have taken some of the um, uh, the general ed classes and such like stuff like that. So you you have some of the classes that you need. So obviously it won't take you as much time at Andrews. So if you I, I um, it, it was um, if you have done engineering or if you had a background in any of the STEM programs, we can consider you to see if you you know that we can use your transcript and your certificate to determine how long it will take you to complete the program. So I mean I think with this one, I won't be able to tell you exactly how long a person is expected to you know whatever to complete the program because we have to do a transcript evaluation to determine which of the credits will transfer. But it's important that if you are now going to go to KNUST, you ask for that option so that they align you with the classes that you need to be able to complete the aviation program here at Andrews University. And for most people who have done, let's say engineering, it will take about two years. It's called two plus two. So the expectation is that you do your first two years in Ghana and then you do your um, remaining two years at Andrews University. If you have already graduated from KNUST, if you send in your transcript, we do a transcript evaluation and see how many more credits you will need to take in order to become a pilot. But the, FF, the FAA requirement still stands. The flight part of the training has to be done in America. You need to do all the flying hours right here um, in the United States of America and at Andrews University. So next slide, please. Okay, so this was when we signed the agreement at KNUST. Um, the gentleman standing right next to me for those who went to that school or are at that school right now, it used to be the vice chancellor for the university. So when we signed it in 2019, he was the vice chancellor. But the person standing right next to him is the current vice chancellor for the university. So you know, this is when we signed it. And the, the gentleman standing next to me his name is Dr. Stephen Payne. He's actually going to be joining us very soon. He, he'll be one of the presenters here today. So he will be joining us very soon. So he was the person who um, represented Andrews University at the signing. And so I think we can go to the next slide, Amanda. <clears throat> so the finances, as I said, it's a partial scholarship. And the reason why when we're doing the advertisement, we said that this is for Ghanaians is because the we we I mean of course we do scholarships for every every <clears throat> group of people. If you are coming from Africa, we can assist. But if we are trying to help people get beyond the scholarship that we provide, that Aspire provides, we try to set them up with other organizations. So Get Fund and Scholarship Secretariat have been really entertaining of the idea of helping our students, because obviously if we are taking half of the cost, it means that what they have to also cover is not as much as if let's say they had to pay 100%. And so these guys have helped us. We have actually had some Get Fund students um, go through our program and we've had scholarship um, secretary students go through our program. So it is very important that you consider these options as a, a way of supplementing um, the scholarship that we are providing. So we are giving you 50% and these organizations in, most, in some cases also help subsidize your cost. So they either pay the whole 50% that is left or they pay some portion of it and makes it a little easy for you. With the finances, when you are schooling here in America, you are actually allowed to work on campus. And so that is not, it's not a lot of money, but it is enough, in, it's enough money in some instances uh, to help offset some of the cost. But let me highlight this, it's not enough money to pay off your whole tuition. So don't count on um, working to pay the remaining 50%. Of course, if you have additional funds, if you have family, if you have relatives, you have family members, friends or whatever, your church and other places who are willing to um, subsidize is welcome. Wherever you get the remaining is okay. But we take 50%. These organizations have helped some of our students. 
and um, if you have additional resources, you know that's fine. You can you can bring the money from wherever uh, you're going to get the help from. So Amanda, we can go to the next slide. So in summary, um, aviation is a very booming industry. I'm particularly interested. Um, what we do at Aspire is we don't really just um, try to pursue every degree or every program. We are very selective. So we look for places where we think people can find opportunities after they graduate. Because I think what, you know, is very challenging finding the finances to go to school. Education itself is not easy. I mean, just imagine you spend most of your life in the air flying aircrafts and or being underneath some equipment and trying to uh, get a started and stuff like that. So it's very, um, it's not easy. So when you graduate, it is important that you are in an area where you find work, meaningful work, something that can take care of you and can help you take care of your family, something that can help you start a family and stuff like that. So that's the reason why I'm very keen about aviation because the jobs are there, it pays very well. And um, I think uh, there's uh, something that you can, you know, you can make of yourself here. I think Kinsley has been able to join us. Amanda, is that the case? So I've, I've done my presentation based on how I know the program. Kinsley is someone who is a student who is currently in the program. So I think he can speak to some of the specifics. So Amanda, if you know, it's possible, I think he can take away from me. All right, thank you so much for sharing, Kwame. Um, Kinsley, Kinsley Aka, would you want to share if you have the time? Thank you so much for being able to join us, Kinsley. We really do appreciate it. No problem. No problem. Sure. So um, just a brief introduction again. Kinsley is one of our Ghanaian students here at Andrews, and he um, recently got his license. So Kinsley, over to you. OK. Um, um, okay, like oh, yeah, Amanda said, I'm one of the students here. Um, I came in 2019. Um, my, my goal is to, pursue, is, is to pursue my bachelor's in aviation. And um, the, the, AVA, the good thing about the Andrews Aviation Program is that um, it's a, it's a four-year program and you can do a mixture of like, um, aviation flight and aviation business. So what I'm currently doing is a mixture of aviation flight with an emphasis in management. So when I graduate, I'll have um, all my license to be able to um, move me on to the next phase, but also I'll have a little bit of a business background to have like a backup if I need to. Um, as for the aviation program itself, um, in the Adventist, in the Adventist world at least, Andrews is one of the most recognized schools when it comes to it, and it's very good. They they get you flying right away. So I came my freshman year, and in about the first month, I was already up in the air flying. Um, they start you with the ground lessons. You go to the simulators, and um, you then you go into the air, and it's very it's in, it's very intensive, but you pick up on it quickly, and you're patient with you. You have one-on-one -on -one time with your instructors, so you can reach out to them at any time, and you're willing to help you. So yeah. So Kinsley, can I let me ask you a question? You said it's a four-year program. I, I may have miss. Is, is the flight option does it have a two-year option, or is always a four-year program? Um. So the original plan was to make it two years, but um, during the program, they've realized that it's actually really intensive and it may, all of it cannot get done in two years. Sure. So what, what, what they usually do is they spread it across all four years and you can take prerequisites alongside your flights. So in turn, you end up spending four years. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So I think where I need to clarify is that with the agreement that we had with KNUST, the prerequisites are done before, are expected to be completed before you get here. Yeah. So your concentration yeah. is just on the flight. And I yeah, think that's the fine. difference. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um, just, I'm ask, can I, am I allowed to ask questions, Amanda? 
Yes, you're welcome. Here you are. Okay. All right. Good. So, uh, my next question to you, uh, Kingsley, is: um, You said you started flying within the first year. Is that is that is that what you said? Yeah, the first the first two months of me being there, I was already flying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's... And you don't fly like you fly with your instructors um, when you first get started, and then towards the end of your first um, your first semester, you start flying by yourself to start building confidence. And then um, once you start flying by yourself, build that confidence, then, the time, it, it, then it's time to um, prepare to get your license. And yeah. So as a person who is doing um, aviation flight, mm -hmm. um, what made you choose flight over the maintenance? Is it like? OK. Uh, so the main the maintenance is a uh, uh, more hands on. Like if you're going to be flying for like yourself or you have your own company, where you may need to fix your own planes, maintenance is a good uh, route to go. So for me, my goal is to go into the airlines, and the airlines they don't really mess with the pilots. You're strictly a pilot. Pilots don't mess with maintenance, so they want you to focus on the flight. So. I realized that if I'm to do flight and maintenance, it would be a, it would be a, it would be a lot on my hands. So I wanted to focus on the flight because my goal is to go to the airlines. Hence, if I was going to like a mission field or somewhere where I have to fix my own planes, then I would say you should go with the maintenance route. Okay, but do they allow for a dual? major between maintenance and flight or no yes they do it's so you can do aviation flight and maintenance so you do two years strict your first two years will be strictly maintenance um you spend the whole time at the air park and then your second two years you focus on your flight or you can spread it out between the four years with both okay. yeah. All right. i think uh there's a question here um Okay, so I, I, okay, so let me ask you, but I think this is more a question for Dr. Payne or someone from the department. Is it, per, it says, a student with science background, I'm asking because I have geography background. So um, the classes you're taking, are yeah. they more, like what kind of classes are you taking? Is it like biology, chemistry, no phases? Okay, so we're, um, the, Okay, when it comes to my generals, yes, I have to take at least one science. Um, okay. Like, so you can either take, and they don't limit you. You can take biology, chemistry, physics. You just need one science. And um, um, so if you have a science coming in, it's already good. They'll probably, um, if it's recognized by the university, they can write it off. You don't have to retake the class. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so 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 those things are more general ed's like yeah, what general. everybody has to take. Okay, yeah. gotcha. yeah. okay, okay, okay. Amanda, any more questions? Um, I just wanted to find out from Kinsley so far. How's your experience been? Like, um, being an aviation student and now having your license. How's the whole experience been so far for you? The experience is 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 very. It's like one of. It's very amazing because um. Out of like most of the aviation majors, I mean, sorry, uh, other majors here, I'm, I, I actually feel like I'm getting right into what I want to do. I'm getting hands-on uh, experience while, while I'm in school, like rather than waiting to graduate and then going into uh, the field, I'm getting experience while in school. Um, I'm flying and I'm getting exposed to the industry. Um, as of now, I have my private license. So I'm currently working on my commercial license. Um, and that's, it's also um, the private, like the private, uh, being a private pilot and just being able to say, I could go out and hey, I could fly whenever I want to, is like, it's not, not everybody can say that. So me having that and just being able to say, hey, today I feel like flying, I can go up and fly. It's very rewarding, so yeah. So, so in wrap. So in wrapping up, the Andrews Aviation Program has been good to you. Yes, it's been good so far. Yep. And 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 my last question is: Has the Aspire Andrews Scholarship been helpful to you? 
Oh yeah, definitely. It's been um, very helpful. Like fifty percent, seven thousand uh, dollars per semester is definitely like even if it's yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it in general terms. It's worth it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kinsley. All right, thank you so much, Kinsley and Kwame. I just want to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Stephen Payne. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I believe Dr. Payne has some things that he can share with us. So I'll be sharing. Um, I don't know if Dr. Payne will want to share or can I share the slides that I have? Sorry, Dr. Payne, you've been muted. Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, either way, um, I, you can go ahead and show them and I'll just say, let's go to the next slide. Yes, That'd please. Thank you. You're welcome. Just a moment. And I'm, I'll share. Thank you for the chance to join with you today and talk a bit. Um, I, I just heard the very end of what Kingsley was sharing with you, but uh, the most powerful thing about any academic program is, of course, not only to talk to uh, professionals in the field, uh, but to also just connect with people that are in the program or who have done the program. And uh, it was great to hear the tail end of what Kingsley was sharing with you today. And uh, as I was thinking about talking to you this, this uh, morning, afternoon, um, I was thinking as well about uh, just some of the other uh, aviation students that I follow on Instagram. And it's interesting to see that progression as Kingsley was describing of working their, their way through uh, maybe a regional airline or doing some contract work and working their way up. And so, yeah, built, you know, hearing about uh, the opportunities connected with the program you're considering is really important. And I'm glad Kingsley could uh, be here for part of this. Uh, can you do full screen? Under yes. view, I think. Just a moment. Again, I'm grateful for the chance to come join you a bit late. Uh, we just have done our first strategic planning session of the year uh, with the president and on Andrew's campus there is the Uni University Strategy and Policies Committee. And so we were dreaming big and actually one of the programs we talked about today in terms of focusing on the future was uh, aviation and, and partnerships exactly like this one uh, as a way not only um, to uh, help our own program, of course, but to also reach out and, and form partnerships around the world, especially uh, I think as you've probably already been talking as you think about uh, the power of a partnership uh, like this one uh, for, for students, for a region of the world, and for Andrews. Um, I could also do the presentation from mine if you can't do the full view. I think I'm a co-host, so I can share. Let me try that. Can you see this okay? Yep. Okay. Well, I, this is just going to be a review and a few specific details. And uh, by the way, um, I've, I've shared, a, as you've seen, we've got a copy of this uh, with the Aspire team, uh, Aspire Skills Hub team. And uh, uh, you may be interested in getting this later on. And um, you'll see right at the end, I've included a few website links uh, that I think will be of interest to you as you think about this option. So. Again, uh, thank you for the chance to be here today. Um, I think as Kwame may have shared with you, um, I'm special assistant to the president at Andrews University for University and Public Affairs. And part of that work uh, in a very exciting way means that I get to work on partnerships like this one. So uh, Kwame and I have traveled to Ghana together in the past and we hope to do it in the future. And I know we're on a short time frame, so we'll discuss Kelly Welly the next time we're together. So here's our Department of Aviation, just a quick overview. Uh, by the way, I, I give you greetings from Dwayne Hobbinick, who is a uh, lead person in our program. These are, uh, this is actually information that he's put together to share, uh, but he's actually outside of uh, Michigan right now, getting some additional planes for the program. Uh, so 
I'm speaking on his behalf and sharing his information. Um, and again, some of this may be a bit of a repeat, but uh, let's just move through it quickly and see if you have uh, questions. Uh, and I see a few here in the chat window as well. Um, so the program on our campus was uh, started in the early 70s, so about 50 years ago. And uh, I think, as you may know, if you've looked on a map or heard about Andrews, we're uh, right across the lake from Chicago. And this particular uh, aviation department is actually off on a separate location from the campus where there's airstrips and hangars, and you'll see some pictures of that. Uh, we have about 50 aviation majors a year. This, uh, interestingly and powerfully, uh, Andrews University itself, as you may have heard, is one of the top 10 national universities for international students. And uh, uh, about one out of every four students on our campus each year are from outside of the United States. This is one of the programs where that's really strong in recent years, uh, as not only students from throughout North America, but around the world are responding to change and growth uh, in the aviation industry in all angles, including both uh, mechanical, uh, aviation mechanics, as well as pilot uh, training. Um, and I know in particular, as Kwame and I were visiting Ghana uh, before the world changed dramatically, uh, we were reading and hearing, for example, about the new regional uh, center in Kumasi that's gonna be focused on, on really servicing and doing the mechanical work for airline companies throughout Western Africa. And so, you know, this is a particularly exciting angle as we think about options uh, through our aviation program. Um, this is if you're in a drone or an airplane, this is what our aviation airstrip looks like. Um, it's an airport that's owned by the university. It's got two runways, as you can see here. Uh, instrument GPS approaches, there's self-service fuel. If you've got your own plane and you brought it, and there's actually about 30 private aircraft that are based on the field. Um, and as you'll see, uh, there are aircraft specifically owned by the program uh, some that fly for the, for the pilot training, but there's a few including uh, two almost Learjets uh, that really give students who are focused on the mechanical part a chance to really drill in on not only what's how smaller planes work, but the scope of engines and mechanical systems. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the uh, simulators that we have as well, that also, even though we're a smaller airstrip, give students some incredible opportunity to train for everything they'll face in a career as a pilot or a mechanic. Um, we have certificates in flight and maintenance. Uh, those are shorter programs, the associate degrees also in those two areas. We're talking, I think in particular today, mostly about the bachelor degrees, about beginning your studies on another campus, but then coming to Andrews to complete. And uh, you can see the array of programs, flight, maintenance, management, flight, management, maintenance, and flight and maintenance combined. And by the way, our aviation department is also part of our college of professions, which, are, which houses our School of Business Administration. So there's also some interesting, you see a couple of options here for management. There's a way in which we connect both the business training and the pilot training. And I see a couple of people have said, you know, how can I put different careers uh, together as I think about this for a future? And management, uh, as you can see here, is one of those options. Um, the gentleman who I'm sharing this on behalf of is the upper left there, uh, Captain Dwayne Hobanek, uh, uh, who has an MBA as well. Um, and you can see in particular um, some of the other staff and, and uh, aviation teachers and support staff on campus. Uh, the flight program is a three-year program. Uh, there's 61 credits. Uh, the licenses that emerge from this training are private pilot, instrument rating, commercial pilot single, commercial pilot multi-engine, and certified flight instructor. So again, even though it's a, a smaller program, there's really a, a global, not only a global view into where the students come from, but a global view in terms of the industry is if you're building your foundation for, an industry, for a career in aviation, what are the different qualifications and exposure that you need to have? And, and again, uh, there's a progression once you're done with Andrews, if that's the choice that you make, 
to work your way up then into the career area of your choice uh, in aviation. Dr. Uh, Bain, yes. I think your screen is frozen on the first slide. Okay. The slide is stuck, yeah. But do you see teachers now? We only see Department of Aviation Andrews University, the first ah. slide. Let me try that again. It's, it's confused today, I'm sorry about that. Yes, Can you see faculty and staff now? Yes, now we do. Do you see degrees offered? Yes. Okay, so sorry, very sorry about that. So again, if you're interested in reviewing this later on, uh, Aspire has a PDF and we can share that with you. So again, here are the different degrees, especially we're focused on the bachelor degrees uh, today, I think. And then here are the staff, teachers, the support staff that are part of our aviation program. Uh, can you see the licenses now? Yes. So this is just what I finished sharing is even as a smaller program, you've got private pilot, instrument rating, commercial pilot, single engine, commercial pilot, multi-engine, certified flight instructor. Uh, so those are all part of that bachelor level study. And also um, the way our program is set up, we have our students are eligible for a reduced hour FAA license training program license. And so that's usually longer, but because we've worked with the FAA, uh, the way our program is set up, these sorts of exposures to all sorts of flight scenarios, uh, engine scenarios means that there's an opportunity to work on your FFA, FAA, excuse me, Federal Aviation Association license much sooner. Oh, now my screen is frozen. Whoops, sorry about that. So this is just to kind of walk through uh, the progression. Um, you may not be here uh, for the first year or two of your studies, but as you integrate into the program, these are sort of the, the areas uh, that you'll focus on. Uh, each semester, they'll, you'll continue to build. You'll start out with flight one and pilot ground school, basic aircraft systems, and then move through that semester by semester. And you can see it's also designed uh, for a summer focused on uh, studies in the area of flight after that first year. Uh, in the second year, there's commercial pilot ground school, uh, CFI uh, certified flight instructor ground school, basic and advanced ground instru instruction and so on. Um, this will gives you a little bit of the idea of what, what you have to learn from and work with while you're especially if you're focused on being a pilot, there's three Piper Archers, a Piper Cherokee 180, a Piper Arrow, two other Piper Seminoles. And then significantly, Andrews is a place, as you may know, in, in Southwest Michigan, uh, where there's snow and bad weather at certain times of the year. And there's a couple of ways that we work around that. Uh, and they're really tied into these flight simulators. You can see a couple of pictures right at the bottom here. Uh, we were actually the first university to get these uh, commercial level flight simulators from a company in France. They had sold it to several different airlines in the United States, but we were able to be the first ones to implement it on a university campus. And that is something where if the weather's bad and you can't fly in one of these planes that's mentioned here, that gives you an option to practice indoors. Uh, but significantly, as you work on the instrument ratings and so on, these flight simulators go all the way up to commercial, the large commercial uh, aircraft. And so uh, again, even in a, in a smaller program, you've got exposure to this high level training, the skills of the faculty and the staff and the support team on the, at the uh, aviation program, but then also these resources to use. A maintenance program, some of you may be interested in that. Uh, that's a two-year program. You can see that it focuses on general and airframe in the first uh, year and then power plan in the second. Uh, you'll, you'll do 60 hours, 60 credits of hands-on uh, training and maintenance and aviation electives, and then 2,000 hours in class. And you know, one of the things you'll see right here is that 60% of those 2,000 hours is hands-on work. And one of the things that's powerful is you move into a career, even if you have started preparing for that career in a university is to have these opportunities 
to have relevant saleable skills, even as part of your experience as a student. Um, and this gives you an idea of how the classes work. It's, it's basically a work week, eight hours a day, five days a week. Um, these are just some information on the different classes, again, semester by semester. If you're interested in these sorts of details, again, ask for the PDF. And also, you'll see at the PDF at the very end, I've got a couple of links to websites that will be useful to you. Aspire, which you already know, uh, but then also the university and the Ghana agreement, which offers this $14,000 scholarship, and then the aviation department itself. Um, in your second year, you're going to be focusing on turbine engines, power plants, propellers. And uh, here's, here's what I was saying earlier is even, uh, even though our, our fleet that flies is not very large, there's a lot of great hands-on experience with these planes that are dedicated or parts of planes or engines that are dedicated to the training of our mechanics, our aviation mechanics students. You can see there's five different, seven different Cessnas. The Mitsubishi turboprop is a helicopter engine. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we have two Learjets that aren't going anywhere right now, but the engines and so forth are, are, are useful to our students as they're thinking about, again, aviation mechanics in a variety of settings. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, both of these tracks, flight and maintenance, can be combined with business. Uh, if you want to do that, you'll remember there was a slide we looked at briefly that said management aviation, manage, management aviation, or excuse me, management pilot and mechanics. Uh, this is how that works. You do 21 credits of business courses, and then that allows you to have a combined degree. So it's a business degree and an aviation degree if you choose to put these together. Um, here's just some information on how our students do once they get done. Um, historically, we've been able to place 100% our, of our graduates and jobs at the time of graduation. So I was mentioning earlier, just in my own circle of students that I know, it's been interesting to watch them get jobs upon graduation and then eventually work towards commercial aviation. Uh, another interesting uh, uh, graduate job uh, that one of our graduates received was they became the pilots. There was actually two of them that became the official pilots for the Walmart Corporation out of Arkansas. And so our, our students and the training that they got equipped them to even get a, a, a specific and focused uh, pilot option with a major corporation. Uh, this is an idea of how the wages are right now, starting wages, mechanics, and flight instructors. Then you can see also the pilot uh, salary range as well. Uh, one of the things, you know, as I was talking earlier, uh, and as we wrap up here, it's really important, no matter what career field you're going into, is to have experience uh, while you're a student as well in whatever way you can. And one thing that is challenging in aviation and other fields is you need certain hours or types of experience before you can get your foot in the door in different settings. And so one thing the aviation program really focuses on is to also employ students as they get towards the end of their studies to have them work as part of the aviation team at, in our Department of Aviation. There's also uh, an option for optional practical training, OPT, you may have heard or, or, or thought about this. This is for uh, students who are studying on a visa that they can remain and work uh, wherever, but remain and work for a year or two years in the United States uh, before returning to a home country. Uh, one of the ways that we focus on, uh, especially for some of our international students, to not only give them the chance to be employed while they're a student, but then also to give those students the opportunity to build up their hours and their experience for working a year or two under this optional practical training program. And so, you know, one of the things with aviation, I think, as you know, is it's how many hours do you have under your belt when you're ready to move into the next uh, level of piloting. And uh, this is a great way, not only as a student, but as a graduate to remain connected with the program, do some of the training and the work uh, as part of the aviation department itself.
Um, we've talked about this earlier, uh, the IPS scholarship, that's what's offered. The International Partner Scholarship through the Ghana Agreement is $14,000 a year, $7,000 a semester. And then also there are some flight scholarships that are available on top of that because there are fees connected with equipment or, or flying time. And so the aviation department has also set up uh, a flight scholarship, an aviation flight scholarship of up to $11,000 a year. Um, just to finish off, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I think you may have already re reviewed some of these resources, but if you don't have them, uh, you know, Aspire put together this great seminar today. Uh, they are our partners as we work on the Ghana Agreement. Uh, the specific Ghana Agreement, if you've not looked at that page before, has all of the overview on, um, on the, uh, how this partnership works, how the scholarship works. And then finally, the aviation program itself uh, will take you right into the website. And uh, all of these are clickable links in the PDF. And just to show you quickly, uh, the aviation department, once you get to that site, uh, you'll see some more pictures beyond what I've shared here. And then there's a couple of videos that might be interesting uh, to you as well. By the way, here's this uh, scholarship that I was mentioning, $11,000 for aviation students. And uh, anyway, more details, uh, especially as you work on this career goal, uh, this study option for your lives. Um, hopefully that's a helpful resource for you. So can you Thank actually you. see, can you see the, uh, the aviation oh, website? Or you or did you just see the slide? Yeah, I think we couldn't see the aviation link. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll show this and shut up. So here's what the page itself will look like. But there's a couple of specific videos right at the top and towards the bottom of the page that about our aviation program. You can dig into more information about what we've shared here, uh, especially on this website. So thank you again for the chance to join with you today. Thank you. Dr. Payne, I have a question about the 11,000. You said it's for equipment. Is I'm that sorry. For the 11,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I, it is specifically for flight students. Okay, that was my question. Yeah, I'm right. sorry. I misspoke when I was starting to describe it. And the idea behind that is the specific expense uh, for flight students is you have to pay for your flying time sure. on top of your tuition. And so that's what that 11,000 was for, or is for. So, and someone's asked, uh, how is that different from the Aspire Scholarship? Those, uh, the Aspire, the International Partner Scholarship, uh, 14,000 is um, a scholarship that you'll get uh, going, entering any program at Andrews through the Ghana Agreement, but as we're talking about aviation right here, then if you enroll in aviation and you take flight training, then that $11,200, and you'll see the exact amount on the website, is on top of the International Partner Scholarship. Right. So, Thank okay. you so much. So basically, um, you get the 11000 in addition to the 14,000 that you're getting through the AITP. Correct, and that's for students in flight training. Yes. In flight training, yes. Yes. Right. Okay, so we do still have um, some questions here, Dr. Payne. Um, I have a question from Bright. He's asking that, um, is the aviation program pertaining to students with science backgrounds because he has a geography background? Oh, uh-huh. So I think he wants to know if it's just for science background um, students. Yeah, it's, it's actually for students from all sorts of backgrounds. Um, I know as we've begun our work through the Ghana Agreement, and I think you may have covered this and some of you may be from this university, in addition to the Ghana Agreement, we have a specific partnership with KNUST there in Kamasi. And in that case, um, I believe uh, it's engineering students primarily that are coming through that. Yes. Uh, but there's no specific prerequisite for flight training. I mean, there will be, I mean, it's an interesting question because certainly there is a lot of 
science and understanding of engineering details and technology and so forth as you as you can I know you already know as you think about aviation um, and so uh, the you know students can and will be able to learn about that and master those things but it's not a prerequisite um, and so uh, but but it is a, a set of skills that as you go through your studies, those are things that will be relied on. And actually, to add to to add to your point, Dr. Payne, I think the aviation like Kingsley came from high school to the program, so he he didn't have that science background. I think as long as you have the capacity to learn those things, you will learn it through the program as you go. Yeah. Um, the KNUSD agreement is for I think um, engineering. Mm -hmm. But um, we had a student who applied. Normally, even if you don't have an engineering um, degree, they will evaluate your transcript and then they'll let you know what can be, you know, um, swapped for something else or how many credits you have to take in order to, to be able to graduate. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and, and by the way, I think that that relates a bit. Uh, there's a question here from Patricia about uh, her remote pilot license and do you get any module credits when you go to the program? Um, as as um, Kwame was just sharing with you, um, when you do enter the program, uh, especially what we're talking about today is students will come in as transfer students. You, know, you may have already done some college work or you may come directly. If you've done university work somewhere else or training somewhere else, there is that process of evaluation, evaluating, excuse me, what credit you have and understanding how that relates uh, to the degree program at Andrews University. And so part of your admission process, if you do have university training, uh, will be to look at uh, what specific work you've done before. And then uh, that will be, uh, the fancy word is articulated, they'll confirm how that applies to what the overall requirements are, but then what you also, also still need to do. So I'm not exactly positive on um, the remote pilot license specifically, but as you work through the process, either through Kwame and Aspire or myself, we can get you those specific answers. And um, so is that helpful? Yes, yeah. please. I believe it is. And we have um, another question. We do have some few questions in the chat. Um, this is from Odette. She wants to know um, that she has an engineering background as her first degree. Can she still pursue this career with how many years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, somewhat like the, um, the uh, transfer credit question, but now we're talking about a degree already in place. Um, so there are a number of students, even on our campus, who complete one, one degree and then, and then take another one. And so um, how that would relate in this case is we can and would look at that degree, we can and would look at, at what has already been studied. Um, and then that would determine for certain uh, what the length of time would be for that second degree. You know, in your case, you're saying, I, I have this engineering degree, I'd also like to earn an aviation degree. Um, aviation, of course, is a program that's a professional program. And so the one thing that, that will also impact how many years it might or might not take is that there are, there are so many discipline specific courses um, that will need to be completed to earn the degree. And so there would be, whether you're coming in as a transfer student or a student who already has a degree, we'd look at that foundation that you have from your previous studies and then connect that with what still needs to be completed. And you know, as, as Kwame shared a few moments ago, part of that evaluation process, we'll be looking at, even if the classes don't have exactly the same name, what are the equivalencies between what you've already studied at another university or you've already earned in, an, in another university degree? And then how does that apply to the uh, aviation track? And someone just asked quickly, uh, we talked about, about KNUST. Um, the Ghana agreement and the scholarship for aviation students is eligible to anybody uh, who qualifies for the Ghana agreement. 
As we've begun that work in Ghana, though, we have met with and talked with the uh, administrators at Ken UST and Kamasi. And for that specific school, they have wanted to offer this, this option of aviation for their engineering students. And so, and so we're, we also have a partnership specifically with that university. But regardless of whether you are at KNUST or not, the Ghana agreement also allows for aviation study and this international partner scholarship regardless. Thank you so much, Dr. Payne. I believe we have another question here. Um, how do you apply and what are the requirements? Okay. Um, if you, uh, I think you probably have this as well on your uh, website, uh, Kwame, how you can begin the online application process. Yes. Um, but, so, uh, go ahead, Tim. Um, we've had a lot of uh, issues with people not applying with the right principles. Like I think uh, Dr. Payne, you and I went through a whole lot of uh, names where we didn't know if they belong to the agreement or not. Mm -hmm. So when we talk to a group like this, we have a process. Send us an email saying you are interested in the program. And Amanda or someone will you know, send you the agreement to sign and stuff like that. We will schedule a time and then fill the application with you so that we will check the right boxes during the application process itself. Because even this semester, I'm dealing with a few people who may have spoken to us, but then they went ahead and applied themselves. And now they want to be able to take advantage of the agreement, but we are having issues with, um, I don't think it's going to be a big problem, but it becomes an inconvenience. Now we have to go to the school and say, well, this person is really our student, but you know, we didn't really, um, we missed them. So now put them on, this, on, on the agreement because the university have been specific. If you come under an agreement, you stay under that agreement. So if you apply and you don't check the right boxes, then you may be stuck with something that Perhaps if, let's say, if you had allowed Amanda to walk you through the principles, it wouldn't have been that difficult to do. So send us the email and then we we'll walk you through it. I think Amanda is actually, as part of her presentation today, going to show you how to fill the boxes. When you get to a certain step, let her know. We will actually uh, review it and then send it on your behalf. So I, I think Amanda has that as part of her presentation today. And just a quick footnote to what you shared, Kwame. Uh, I just put in the chat window, uh, there is an application fee, but since you're a part of this agreement, uh, when you get, as you work through the application, there's two key points to look at as you're thinking about this program. One is there's a place where it asks for your application fee. And you would put uh, 2022 AGREE, all capital letters. This is in the chat window as well. Um, and then the second part, and as Kwame has, has noted, it's really important to keep connected with Aspire. And as Aspire and Andrews works together, we want to make sure that if you qualify for the International Partner Scholarship, you receive it. In the application itself, you'll also get to a question that will ask you or um, will say, are you coming under an agreement or are you attending Andrews University through an agreement? When you get to that particular part, uh, there'll be a pull down menu and you'll see that this says Ghana agreement. I think it says Aspire Business Network. And so that's another way to help make positive that as you prepare to enroll, if you qualify for this, uh, then we are connecting that. That is, that is in terms of the internal process at Andrews, a way to assure that that 14,000 international partner scholarship is properly applied as you start working on your financial admission to Andrews. And I think there's a bit more presentation, but let me answer one other question quickly. Um, this, at this point, this agreement is specifically uh, for Ghanaian citizens through the Ghana agreement um, or uh, students from KNUST. So if you're from other countries and not a Ghanaian citizen, unfortunately, this particular scholarship is not available. 
Yeah, that's true. Okay, Amanda. Okay, um, so I think that if you do have any more questions, kindly put it in the chat. And if you are interested in applying or you are interested in any of the slides, kindly send an email to scholarships at aspirebusinessnetwork.com. I have typed it in the chat so that um, we can work with you with the application processes. Um, Kwame, I think, is it okay to wrap up? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so this um, is a, if, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you were calling me. <laughs> if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can follow us on our social media pages um, at Aspire Skills Up on Facebook, Instagram, or you can send us an email at scholarships at Aspire Business Network for the slides and for us to help you through the application process. Once again, I just want to tell um, Dr. Thane that I really do appreciate him being here. And thank you all so much. Despite the technical challenges that we had earlier on, we really do um, apologize for that. And we really do appreciate you being able to join us within that short notice so we really do appreciate it a lot um i just saw a message right here yes yeah, so thank you so much and we'll go on to share this video on our facebook and instagram pages as well as youtube and get all those who couldn't be here because of this technicalities um to be informed about everything that we've spoken about today so um if there are no further questions i would just like to say thank you to everybody for being here and we really do appreciate it and we hope you enjoy your weekend thank you once again dr penny thank you so much kwame for being uh, here there's a question on linkedin let me because it's, i think it's a good sure. one okay. um no so uh with the scholarship secretariat and get fund it depends on the application you put in Okay, so it's not automatic. With ours, as long as you meet the university's minimum requirements and you go through the steps, of course, we will make sure that you get what has been promised. Um, the only times we've had challenges, if, if let's say you present a fake certificate, we do our pre-screening, we make sure that if you, know, you embellish any of the facts around your academics, we will make sure we deny you the scholarship because it's not only a stain on your reputation, it's also a stain on our organizations and the university doesn't like that. So as long as you have the right academic credentials and you go through the steps, we will make sure that the university um, delivers on its promise. We've never had an issue of anybody coming here and be denying, being denied the scholarship. So that one I need to you know, make sure that we highlight. If you go to get fund, or if you go to scholarship secretary, what they require is that you meet their requirements as well. So you have to be a Ghanaian, you have to write the application, you have to have been admitted to an approved university. Approved in this sense means that it has to be an accredited university and, and that you are you know, able to come here to study. Then they will review it and um, give you the scholarship or deny it based on you know, some the basis and their, their requirements. When we were in Ghana, um, the I, I think Dr. Penn and I have been to Ghana twice. The first time we actually went to scholarship secretariat, we sat down, we met with them. I've been in contact with people from the other organization. The second time we were actually on our way there, but because of something we were not able to make it, but we've been in contact. And I can say that we have, a, we have students here who are beneficiaries of scholarships from those organizations. So it's possible. This makes education a little cheaper. And this is meaningful education. Aviation is a booming industry, as I said in the beginning. So if there's a way you can take advantage of it, we are more than happy to guide you through whatever that needs to be done. And I know Dr. Payne is also very committed to making sure that this agreement is successful. So thank you very much. And we apologize for the hiccups in the beginning. I know we, we lost a lot of people because of the Eventbrite issue but we make sure that we email the link to every single person who uh, signed up to come. So thank you very much for coming. I know Dr. Payne, you had your hands up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.